you know, I don't know what the meaning of life is, but that doesn't mean that I can't make that meaning for myself. And so for me, it's music. What's up guys? Now I've been watching this guy for a long time on Instagram. I've been hoping that I could meet up with him when I got to New York. I wanna try to do this interview in a very special location. I know what it looked like about 30 years ago from pictures, but I have no idea what it's gonna look like today. So we're taking a chance and just gonna see what we can do. All right, it's almost 11 o'clock. He should be coming any minute. By the way, we're right outside the original home of Def Jam Records. That's right, Russell Simmons, Rick Rubin, set up shop right here when Def Jam started. And we're gonna do our interview on the stairs. Hopefully nobody kicks us out. How's it going? How you doing? One more time, check. check one, two. Oh, that's nice. That's oh, nice. Good. All right, we're good. Do you know what this is? No idea. All right, this is where a famous photograph was taken. There it is. What? That's Run DMC, <laughs> Beastie <laughs> Boys. What? That's legit, on man. On these steps that's right legit, here. Man. Who are you? Tell me a little bit about you. Uh, yeah, so I'm Alejandro. Uh, I go by the Frenetic. I grew up in Brooklyn. I was born in Colombia. Um, and I'm a music producer. I would say that my genre is a mix of chill hop and a lot of boom bap. I do some modern genres too. I like to mix everything together. You've got almost 40,000 followers on Instagram. I was just looking at your recent post. I think the last one you did it has more than 200 comments on it. One guy just said, yes. <laughs> Damn, cousin, this shit is crazy. Fire, fire. One of my favorites was, I'm surprised your pads don't catch fire. <laughs> I saw a post that you did some time ago, but it, it kind of looked almost looked like a basketball or a secret oh, yeah. commercial yeah. for Nike? Well, that was through Kicks TQ. So he's a fashion model and he does these collaborations. When he makes his videos, he's looking for, you know, hip hop music and modern sounds and things. Yeah. So that beat was for one of those collaborations. Take me back to your first memory of you getting into music. When I started taking piano lessons, I was eight years old. And at first I hated it. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. It was like kind of enjoyable, but I didn't want to practice. I know like, what you mean, yeah. Yeah. But then by the time I got to middle school, I started to pick up the guitar. I started playing in a band and writing songs. I think I was like 12 or 13 years old. On my Windows computer, they had the little um, sound recorder. Yeah. And I had like one of those 90s You just used, the, used sound recorder? Yeah. And I would just stack the audio on top of each other. My dad's like, oh, what nice. the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, Dad, I'm making music. I didn't really start making beats and, and getting involved in music production until college. And that was about two years ago. I feel as though I'm still trying to discover what my sound is. What I, what I post up is genuinely what I like to make. I don't really filter what I put up. I only post what I feel represents my art and I guess people just like it and I'm grateful. Where do you find motivation? Where do you find your creativity? Lately, it's just been life itself. Because, you know, I don't know what the meaning of life is, but that doesn't mean that I can't make it myself. Yeah. Make that meaning for myself. And so for me, it's music. So just waking up every day and, and knowing that, you know, I could die at any moment. Anyone could die at any moment. So right. why not make this meaning for my life? Creativity, I would say, comes from 
just listening to a ton of music, being open to everything. I want to talk a bit about your workflow. Where do you get your samples? Most of my samples are drum samples. Just doing sound design in Logic. I don't really buy any plugins. I use all the stock plugins. Um, and kind of just going from there and then recording guitars, bass. Yeah. My drum samples are mixed between splice samples and then also making drum samples from scratch. So also going into Logic, using yeah. the stock drum plugins that they have available. Let's talk about your gear. What do you use the most? So our question, I, would, I guess my MPD. Yeah. My, yeah, my MPD I use the most. That makes a lot of appearances. If you were stuck on an island and you only had one piece of gear with you, what would you want with you? That's a tough one, man. Because <laughs> I want my instinct says MPD, but then pianist in me says, where are my keys? You know, like, I don't know if I'd yeah. be able to go without the keys. So. A lot of people are making music in their bedroom, but they don't put their music out there for people to hear. And I think some of it comes from maybe that initial fear of getting your stuff out there, criticism. Did you feel that when you were uh, when you first started making music? How'd you get past that? Um, I would definitely say I felt that. I mean, looking back now, if I if I listen to those old beats, those first posts on Instagram, like they they kind of sucked, you know? <laughs> like, and that's okay. Yeah, it's okay because you're just starting out. So. It's understandable that people kind of had that restriction, but I would just say, like, don't give a shit. But how are you ever supposed to get a fan if nobody ever heard your thing? So you just gotta do it. You just gotta put it out there. Don't care. Okay. Again, I All right. Tell us a secret about your music production that maybe some of my viewers could learn from. I would have to say that you have to think about the drums as one instrument. In terms of, you know, the, the sound selection that you use and yeah. when you're mixing, making sure that things are sitting together, using a bit of compression. And so a technique that you would use to achieve this would be utilizing track stacks. You're able to take different tracks, drag them into one summing stack and be able to mix that's all of those tracks just from one track. And so it really okay. helps with achieving that one instrument sound. The drums are primary because without the beat, there's nothing. Do you have something that you could play for us yeah, today? Yeah, for sure. It's something that's going to be on my album. We're going to see you playing it live. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, All right, do it. let's do it. Cool. tell somebody who's trying to get into this and trying to get their stuff heard put your music out there and always be exposing what you're capable of even if you're a beginner even when you're just starting out there's no way that you're ever gonna get better unless you keep challenging yourself to really get your music heard by other people always be networking with people who are trying to do the same thing that you're trying to do Surround yourself with people who are better than you and just constantly giving yourself a reason to push yourself. Thanks so much for your time. Keep making those awesome beats. Thanks, brother. Great advice from the Frenetic. He's been awesome. Keep yeah. doing what you're doing. You guys keep making the music that you love. 
and we will see you later. All right.